want those open? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Good to be with you guys again. A great uh, day on ice. Uh, ladies were spectacular. Guys were real good. That's, they're both good, right? No, you guys are good. And uh, it's uh, been a real honor to be with you guys. All right, so tonight, uh, obviously, last night we talked about the inner game. And that, uh, that thing that drives our talent. Tonight, we're going to talk about leadership. Let me ask you a question. Fire away all the skills that it takes to be a hockey player. Just fire them away. Shooting. Skating. Sorry? Vision. I like it. What'd you say? Courage. Drive. Will. How about, how about those? Yeah, tenacious. I like that. How about the outer, the outer skills? You know, those... Passing. Yes. What else? Fire away. All right. So let's let's go to this. What's the number one skill? Okay. How many people agree that the if you had to boil it down, the number one skill would be skating? Would we agree? Coaches up there, do you guys agree with that? If you can't skate at a high level, what happens? can't play. Okay? Oh, that's good. Did you guys hear that? If you can't skate at a high level, you coach. <laughs> that's really good. I think that's true. <laughs> okay, so, you know, if skating's the number one, I'm going to suggest that leadership is number one for the rest, for all of life. I don't know why, but I am just passionate about leadership. You know, if there's one thing you could take from this camp, if you could grow yourself as a leader, as you continue to grow yourself as a player, this country will take off. This the place you live will be better. You'll have amazing families. You'll grow incredible businesses. So leadership is the key component. All right, enough of me. We are, uh, here's what I need you to do. We're, we're going to move tonight because enough of me, you listening to me. Uh, I need you to get in groups of fours. Now, here, I, I wouldn't, I don't mind if you're the three people next to you, but I'd like you to stand for this exercise. Control. Inspiring. Inspiring. Excellent. Okay. So take your pen and your piece of paper and put down for your number four. Where, where's my drum roll? Okay. Inspiring. Okay. So put down inspiring for your number four. All right. Fire away some of your number threes. Where'd you guys land for number three? Sorry? Cooperating? Dependable. 
self-control, determined, supportive, cooperative, I heard honest, ambitious. All right, where's the drum roll? All right, are you ready to write? Put down competent. I don't even know what that word means. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about that. When, you're, when you have competence, like yeah. when you're competent, it means oh, okay. you know your stuff. Okay? How about number two? Supportive. Moms and dads up at the back there. What's your number two? Beautiful, self control. Broad minded. How about right at the very back? Honest, good. Courageous. Courageous. Loyal. Loyal. Supportive. Courageous. Supportive. I heard supportive here. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? Forward looking. It's always really. <laughs> And, okay, and your number one, write it down, honest. Yes! You write it down. Inspiration for me is, is when you see a, an uncle who's battling cancer. You know, you see a mom and a dad who, you know, are, have had a tough go and they rebound hard. Like, for me, those things inspire me. So I'd love you to think about this inspiration. We're going to talk about that today. So as you lead, and remember the premise, every one of you is a leader. Think about these four characteristics when you go back to your team. Honesty, forward-looking, competence, and inspiring. So if you can get those into your conversations with your team, that would be very cool. With corporate, uh, corporate America, I do a lot of corporation stuff, leadership stuff. We actually work these four words into our language. Like this is such a good camp here. Your camp, the owners of this camp, and I know they'll do it, they need to talk about how honest this camp is. How much it, it looks forward to building players. Right? You know, it's competent, it's got great coaching, and, and it's inspiring. So those are words that you want to get in to your conversations. All right. Good job. Give yourself a hand. Good job, you guys. Well, let, let me just share a couple thoughts on a couple of these concepts. Here's what we know. If you don't know your destination, if you're in Vancouver and you have no idea where you want to go, I, it's the only thing I can guarantee you, you won't get it. It's true, isn't it? So having a strong sense of where you want to land that plane might be as simple as, I'm going to play midget AAA this year. I don't know. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that I had real clear goals as a teenager. I know it's tough. But the clearer that you can be, the more that your body and your mind and your heart connect. It's called your reticular activating system. You know, you ask your mom and dad, they say, well, you know, I think we're gonna buy a new car. All of a sudden, everywhere they look, there's this sign, car for sale, car for sale, car for sale. Once you lock in in your brain what you want, it goes, got it. And it all of a sudden brings to mind all these things. And that's why the greatest players are so great. They think of a few things. Recent stat. Uh, the average person has between 2,500 and 3,500 thoughts per day. At, you know, being around 12, 10 to 12 seconds long. 2,500 to 3,500. Do you know how many the average exceptional athlete has per day. 1,500! You see, we're a lot stupider. No, that's not true. The average person thinks about all the negative things that could happen in life. The supreme athlete thinks about 
what they want. 1,500 thoughts a day about what they want. I get a score goal to make Whatever. So the power of landing your plane is still a key component to self-leadership. We're going to look at two things tonight real quick. Self-leadership and leading others. Secondly, leaders have to take responsibility. Have you ever heard your coach say that? Oh my goodness. What a hundred times. Uh, Gordy Lane, some of these old guys up here know Gordy Lane. Gordy Lane was my buddy. When I was with the Washington Capitals, Gordy was a big defenseman. He protected me and he was my buddy. Gordy Lane stuttered badly. And, and I was his roommate first period, another scrap the second period. Third period, I get hit in the shoulder, my stick turns and hits Terry O'Reilly on the top of the head, and he's got no helmet on. Taz looks at me, and he's, he's already had a couple fights too, and he looks at me and he says, Wally, we gotta go. And I'm hoping he means to Tim Hortons, or maybe <laughs> Starbucks. And we fight, and we scrap, and we fall. And I'm gonna get the greatest punch of my NHL career on the toughest guy in the NHL. He's wide open. He looks up at me and he says, Wally, he says, my shoulder's up. When we fell, he dislocated his shoulder. I said, Taz, no problem. I'm tired. Let's go. And so I got off. You know what's interesting is I got a call three months, uh, it was actually the next year in April. And I got a call from Nate Greenberg, the PR director of the Boston Bruins. And Nate called and, and he said, Ryan, it's Nate Greenberg, Boston Bruins. I'm thinking the Canadians traded me and they forgot to tell me. <laughs> he said, no, 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 we haven't traded for you. He says, here's what's happening. You and your wife are coming to Boston Friday night. I've talked to Savard and Lemaire. We're all set. I said, well, Nate, what's going on? He said, Terry O'Reilly wants you to be at his retirement bank as the only team. Big Mike Civic, the linesman. He's got the puck, he's in the neutral zone, Lyndon's here, Joe Sackick's here, and he's got a conundrum. Think about it. In today's hurry up NHL, he's got 15 seconds to drop that puck, 14, 13, 12. But if he drops the puck, he stops the standing ovation for Trevor Lyndon, 10, 9, Eight, six, he has no idea what to do. Three, two, click, he's got an idea. I'm looking right into Big Mike's eyes. He separates Lyndon and Sackett. The standing ovation keeps going. And Big Mike Civic takes the puck and he gets down on one knee over by the boards and he pretends to patch a hole in the ice. There's no hole in that ice. Lonnie Cameron, the other linesman, gets it. He goes over and he grabs a water bottle from the bench and he squirts water on the non-hole in the ice. And with that charade, two men honor Trevor Lynn. They give him a minute and 15 standing ovation instead of 15 seconds. Leaders, final thought. Find ways to honor you know, start, please, with your mom and dad. I don't know what it is. It could be the smallest little thing. But if you learn to honor them, you will be an amazing leader. Because the greatest leaders in my life honor people. It might be you've got a, a, one of the players on your team that gets picked on all the time by everybody. To honor them, you might become their best friend. Do you want to do that? Probably not. Do you have to do that as the leader? Yep. So you find ways to honor people. Final thought. At the end of the day, leaders, big word in leadership is change. Leadership is about change. You see, my challenge to you as I head back to the mainland tomorrow after we catch all your fish. <laughs> Anybody that's from Port Alberta, you have no more fish left. Okay, tomorrow, right, Gary? You guaranteed that, right, buddy? Uh, here's the big challenge to you at this camp. What do you want to change? You see, the greatest leaders in my life 
make change every week. I'm going to be better in this. I'm going to do this differently. Change is what leadership's about. So think about this. What do you want to change today? You know, i got to tell you, I had some bad habits. I still do. I'm still working. I, I told you yesterday, I'm not sure what I want to do when I grow up. Like I'm in process. I'm 53 years old. I can't wait to be 55 and 65. I don't know what life's got for me, but I'm pretty excited about how I'm going to evolve into it. Remember, it's not about so much what we do. It's about who we are. Who we are drives what we do. Final thought. There's a, a, true, there's a true story. I don't know the guy's name, but uh, there's a gentleman that was in high school, and he just graduated high school. Let's call him Jim. Jim graduated high school, and uh, they had a big party uh, for his graduation, and his uncle came, his very rich uncle. And, and his rich uncle came and he said, after the party sort of, you know, died down, he said, Jim, so you're going to go to university? And, he, and Jim said, yep. And he said, Jim, uh, what are your goals at university? And Jim said, well, I just sort of want to get by. You know, I want to party a lot. I want to just sort of have a good time. And his uncle said, well, you know, Jim, can I say this? At that university that you're going to, he said, I graduated top honors. And he said, I'd like to make you a little wager. He said, if you graduate top honors from that university, he said, I'll give you any car in the world. I'm rich, I'll buy it for you. And he, he said, Jim, what kind of car do you have? And Jim said, ah, I just need an old clunker. And, and, the, and the uncle said, no, 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 what kind of car do you want? He said, well, you've got one of those red Ferrari convertibles. I'll take one of those. And Jim, uncle, Jim's uncle said, you got it. If you graduate top honors, I'll, I'll buy you a red Ferrari convertible. For all of a sudden, Jim now has become a real student. Set a party, he's in the library. He's got a direction. He knows what he wants. He's got an outcome at the end. And Jim gets finished his, as you might guess, his four years top honors. And they have a big party for him. And his uncle doesn't show up. He's so disappointed. And at the end of the party, the mom, his mom, Jim's mom, flicks the little switch and it lifts up, you know, that garage door opener. And in the garage is this red Ferrari convertible. It is beautiful. Jim grabs his best friend, they jump in it, and they get going. And, you know, it's, it goes pretty good, but they haven't got it over like 110. Like, I thought these things, they went to a place in the highway where there's no cops and they were going to do it. And it got up to 120, like this, a Ferrari, like it's supposed to. So they take it in the next morning and they put it up on a lift and they say, you know, there's something wrong, we just can't get this thing. There must be something wrong with the car. The guy brings it down off the lift two minutes later and looks at Jim. He says, Jim, uh, how long have you been driving? Well, since I was 16. He said, and you graduated top honors? Yeah. He said, well, when did you learn to drive with the emergency brake on? <laughs> and you know, that's really our challenge to you as players. What's the emergency brake that you need to get off? What do you need to take off so that you can just fly? I had some things that I had to let go of so that I could gain my dream. What do you have to take out of your frame today to be your absolute best tomorrow? And that's the challenge that we leave you with. I don't have the answers, but you do. You know, I think of some of you young junior players. What a great time in your life. Go for it. Go for it. Go to camp. You know, you have coaches up here. Talk to these coaches. Talk to these coaches about what a junior hockey coach wants. Know what they want. Don't back off. Now is the time. Go and talk to them and say, what do you want to see in camp? Like, what kind of attitude do you want to see? What kind of player do you want to see? Like, go talk to them. So that when you go to camp, you're going in and you're going to make that team. It's already your team, and if someone tries to take the spot, they're in trouble. That's what we have to look forward to as we think about our life. I'm going to end with just a couple questions, and we're done.
Did, did anybody want to see the Stanley Cup ring from last night? I just, did you guys see it? And eventually it'll get back to Questions, thoughts, ideas as we close up. I know there's questions. I, I just always wait for the first one.